Okay, welcome to the final um, video tutorial. So we're going to look in uh, a lot more detail here um, about section B question on boiler stripe pajamas. Um, so you'll need your pen or pencil at hand um, to make some notes. Remember, you can pause the video at any point. Okay. So first of all, how to plan the exam. So we talked about using spy diagrams and all sorts of other techniques. First thing you need to consider um, in order to work your way through this um, is the questions. First of all, okay. Um, choose the strongest question. Choose the one you feel most confident about. You could say most about one that seems like an obvious choice, basically. And um, you have to understand the key words. Okay, so if it talks about a theme like innocence or victims, or it talks about um, the Nazis, you know those are the key words. That's the focus. Everything you say has to be relevant to that question. Okay. Um, then you do your brainstorm or your list of points, and you can even note down quotes that you've memorized, ones which you could attach to those points. And then you number it to decide on the order in which you're going to write. Um, and then finally, you actually start your introduction by addressing the question in particular. Okay, say what your essay will do. Um, so this essay will, will focus on um, the portrayal of Bruno and Schmoll and their developing relationship. Um, it will show this, maybe just um, two or three sentences just to introduce. And then you go into detail with your quotations straight into using the teal structure which I'll talk about in more detail in a moment. Okay. Um, top tips then for essay style. So these are some common targets. Uh, getting the thumbs up there, so do's and don'ts. Um, don't um, jump back and forward in the novel. Okay. Um, it's much simpler, much more straightforward um, and much less problematic in terms of your essay structure if you analyse quotes in the order that they come in the novel. Okay, so don't jump between you know, chapter 19, back to chapter 3, and then back to chapter 14, um, unless you're absolutely confident, um, and unless you're uh, one of those people where you haven't got this target, but it was a very common target. Okay, At this level, I would advise you just straightforward, chronological, in the order that it comes in the text. Okay, um, another, uh, well, our first do, um, make it clear what chapter your quote comes from. Okay, this is related back to the previous point because if you're jumping around and you don't make it clear what's going on or who's involved, who's talking to who, um, it can be very unclear and very confusing um, where your quotes are from. Okay, um, so just you know a little bit of context, maybe just one sentence to say what's going on, who's talking, or what's been described when it comes to your quotes. Uh, make sure you use quotation marks. If you're quoting something that a character says, you need speech marks inside those quotation marks. Remember, a quotation must end, it must have a, a punctuation mark, at least a comma, um, after that. Okay, and if you give a quote, you must explain it. You can't just have a quote hanging in the air there. You should never have a paragraph that ends with a quotation mark. You must explain it. Okay, um, you need to use, just go back, but you, you need to use the present tense as well. Okay, um, so it's, you know, when Bruno says, or when um, the, um, the author describes the camp, Okay, or when as readers um, we encounter or we face up to, to Schmuel's experience. Okay, um, it's not um, Bruno said this or Bruno did that. It's Bruno says and Bruno does. Okay, so present tense. Now teal is a big one, obviously. Okay, I'll just go into more detail here just to explain that. Remember, you've got a handout on this. I'm just going to show you it again. Um, the building blocks of your essay. Okay, so the body of your essay needs to be formed from teal paragraphs. The first T, or the T, uh, the topic sentence. A point you'd like to make and answer the question. Okay, I can't give you sentence starters for that because it depends on the question, depends on the text, doesn't it? So it could be about the story, the characters, or the techniques. Okay, so Bruno is this, Bruno is that, Bruno feels that, the reader feels this way or that way. And um, then your example to back that up or your evidence. That's normally a quotation. Obviously, you can go into the exam with quotations in your mind. Might be a good idea to jot those down first of all before you forget them. Um, and you must use the exact words of the text. You can't approximate. Okay. If you're changing one of the pronouns like he or him, just put in square brackets inside the quote. Who's saying that? Okay. Or, or who's been referred to by those pronouns? So if him is Bruno. Put Bruno in, in square brackets within the quotation. Okay. That's small detail though. So you look at your quotes first of all, and then you, in a way, work backwards. Think about your topic sentence and think about what point you're going to make about that um, quotation. 
then this is where you get most marks. We talked about this, your explanation. You explain in detail what your quote shows and how it relates to the point you just made about in your topic sentence. So this is where you get most marks. And if you can, talk about the author's technique, um, pinpoint a particular word or auditory device um, that he uses and the effect on the reader. Remember, you're always talking about um, the effects on the reader, the portrayal of the characters. You're always talking about answering the question. It must be relevant. Final point, you can link backwards or forwards, back to your original topic sentence, just reinforcing what you said in different words, or linking forward to another quote that links to the quote that you've already given and can develop your explanation even further. Okay? You've got the sheet. These are sentence starters that you can use. On the left hand side, that's just about structuring your essay. The right hand side, Introducing your quotes, a few ideas there. The author describes something as, and then your quotation, or Bruno says, and then your quotation, um, or um, Wenchmull um, describes um, something as, and then your, your quotation. Okay, this is the majority of where you want to focus though. Um, to explain your quotations, this suggests, this shows, this emphasizes, this highlights, this has the effect on, this makes the reader feel, um, you know. Those are the kind of sentence starters you can use after your quotation that will help you, that will prompt you to explain yourself. Here's an example um, of a model to your paragraph um, based on chapter 4 and the sense of danger we get. So the first um, sentence there in red is the topic sentence, then the evidence, the quotation, the, the example, then the explanation and the um, link at the end there and it goes on. On first seeing the camp, Bruno and Gretel believe the behaviour of the prisoners to be strange and are mystified by the right, um, but the writer cleverly hints at the reality the children cannot see. The crowd inside the camp are described as very docile and well ordered, standing, and here's the quote, perfectly still, their hands by their sides, trying to keep their heads up. It's always good to remember to try and integrate your quote into the sentence. You don't want it just kind of um, bookended by two full stops. So you see how that quotation is worked into the sentence and it makes sense. Then sentence starter here, look, this suggests. This suggests a tremendously powerful authority is controlling them. Their body language indicates complete submission to the will of the guards, and we know this is because of the great fear they feel. The verb trying, here picking on a particular word, um, suggests that they are very weak and rather like a baby struggling to, uh, simply to keep their heads up. This could also suggest a struggle to hold their head high in the colloquial kind of common, common uh, place sense of keeping your pride and dignity. Here's our link. Uh, the forlorn and desperate appearance of the prisoners is developed further as they are described as quiet, staring at the ground. And then it could go on to shows. Okay, and then you might link it forwards um, to the description of Shmuel, okay, and the misery um, and the kind of suffering, his unhealthy hands or something like that. Um, it links to the suffering um, and the danger that Bruno senses in the other people in the camp, okay, um, when he does see them. All right. So you can look back at that handout. Um, don't repeat yourself. You don't. You just. You don't get marks. You don't get marks twice if you just say the same thing again. You have to think harder. Uh, and always answer the question. It must always be relevant to the question, whatever the question you choose. Okay. Um, now we talked a little bit about themes um, in the previous presentation. Here's some advice about the chapters that you could focus on. Um, so for friendship, 10, 15, and 19. Um, for innocence or loss of innocence, this kind of really shocking realization of what the world is really like, and that our main characters, our heroes, as it were, they go through. And um, chapter one, two, three, four. But there's a range you could pick on there. To be honest, these are just ones that I would advise you uh, are key. Um, equality and suffering, the racial prejudice, five, six, seven, twelve, thirteen, uh, nineteen. Okay, so consider what happens there. Remember, you've got your plot summary handout with those revision notes um, that go through these key chapters at a glance. So you, you don't necessarily have to look back to the novel and, and use that time. Victims and villains, chapter 4, four um, 12, 19, and 20. Okay, next, um, some more quotations. So pens at the ready. Um, these are about the characters, but you're obviously also going to be able to link them to the themes, the key ideas. Okay. Um, and you'll be able to spot all these top uh, techniques as well from the previous tutorial. Okay, first of all, Bruno. He's suffering. He feels sadness. He's neglected by his father. 
Um, he's ignorant, he, he's naive, he fails to understand the world around him, and obviously we must sympathise with him, pity him because of that. That's clearly his innocence there. Um, here again, his innocence, he, he thinks that Germany is the greatest nation in the world, um, and even makes that point to Schmuel, um, but feels the awkwardness in Schmuel's reaction. So I like when he talks about liking soldiers and his dad being a soldier, there's a silence there, because Schmuel doesn't want to appear rude. Um, rather, you know, a sharp contrast between the innocence of the children and the behaviour of the adults, particularly his father. He has a sense of manners and politeness um, that his mother seems to build in. Okay. Um, again, um, rather like the, arm, the armbands, he wants an armband, he doesn't know which one. He doesn't understand, um, he feels resentment here that he's on the side of the fence which is actually safe. Okay. So again, stressing his naivety. Um, here, the author draws a parallel. They've got the same birthday. The message, the moral message, is obviously that these two children should be friends, they should be able to be friends, um, and making them like twins in that sense, um, have of sharing a birthday, makes that kind of point very obvious to the reader. Um, and this is where, this is his guiltiest moment that he tries to make up for by saving, or by finding Schmuel's father, 